All right, so it's uh, just about the end of the uh, Germans' turn seven. So unfortunately for the British, um, the boat over there beached on turn six, and they're one hex away from, uh, they're just one hex out of range to Germantown. What a bummer. That's the way it goes. Uh, but these two guys are probably pinned or have to go the long way around because if they try to get across the river, it's one movement point to get into the river, but then f um, three movement points to get out. So they're going to, they would, this guy would have um, direct line of sight on them as they were uh, uh, moving, uh, moving across. They're going to get stuck, so they're going to have to go the long way around. Uh, what else can I say? Oh, yeah, the, the German machine gun moved back. Um, on turn six as well, it was like, screw this. Um, I've, I thought, I hopefully had put the Germans in some like mutual support fire zones, uh, but right now the British are uh, essentially uh, going on the left-hand side, but they, they are kind of running out of turns. An interesting quirk is it's always one movement of point, even if you're going adjacent here. So I was like, okay, if they're gonna be following the river or whatever. So I got the, artil uh, the second artillery and the machine gun over to here. And we'll, we're going to start bringing them up uh, towards there as well. And probably sh didn't position them um, well at the very beginning, so I'm kind of running out of time. I'm, I've got troops in the wrong spot. Oh, I'm going to show you an interesting quirk. It's not going to happen due to the fact that too many of the British moved more than two movement points to get to where they are. It's unfortunate because we almost had an interesting little dominoes effect due to the mutual fire. So we are going to get one. This guy can't, um, it's a sacrificial lamb in a way, maybe I should have waited. But uh, this person's moved too many movement points over, so I can't fire on this guy. He's hidden anyways, but as soon as this person uh, opens fire, which I'm going to do, um, he'll become observed. And so people can use the observed fire on him if they, uh, you know, uh, can beat it in. So he's going to fire on him, and as soon as he does that, these three guys will be able to see him. He'll be observed. And so, um, uh, and I'd have to check for the artillery. I don't know how that would, like if he can fire over the wood, like yet again, if that's, no, he, he moved too many, uh, too many movement points. So that's out of the question. So that, but here's the interesting domino effect. It's not gonna happen uh, as extensively as it, it could have. So, you know, like I said, this guy's gonna open fire on this guy. These guys are going to, three are going to observe it and can retaliate, even though, like I said, this is a mutual fire phase. It's just, I really enjoy this game. I think I'm doing it right. So these guys can, three are going to fire. Then this guy and this guy are going to open up, uh, open up um, on this guy kind of thing. And um, one, two, three, I can shoot on him as well. Uh, so in other words, lots of people are going to become observed. No, I can't because the woods are in the way. Um, but if these guys hadn't moved as so much, I could have retaliated again. You know what I mean? We could have went after the machine gun. But it, it, the re regardless thing is going to happen is um, there is going to be a, a, a dominoes effect for observed fire, as far as I know. And I'm going to have, or um, yeah, it's called observed fire. So I'll have to go and take a look at that later. Um, but I'm not going to do the combat right now. I've got to go downstairs and get ready for my uh, creative writing class. But I just wanted to. Uh, Give you a quick update. So that's it. Um, and we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. All right. Hope you're having fun.